They were sent in as cannon fodder. I took the safety off and just started shooting everyone I saw. One of the comrades took an RPG, fired from the window, and hit the BMP, destroying it. I can see the bodies just flying apart. Bullets were flying everywhere, left, right. The fight was really hard. We already realized that it was going to be maximum hell. 13 soldiers against an enemy company. In this episode, you'll see an interview with one of the Rapid Reaction Brigade soldiers who will talk about the most memorable, dangerous, and heroic moments from the combat experience of his special unit, as well as much more. It will be interesting. I'm a scout sapper. That's my full-time position. And those are the functions I mostly perform here. Of course, we had direct contacts with the enemy. One good example is the first days of fighting for the town of Rubazin. We were informed that one of the buildings on the outskirts of the city had been taken by the enemy. Our task was to go there and clear this building. In this case, we performed the function of special forces to sneak in, clear it out, and get a foothold. As we approached, we heard gunshots and saw some movement. We threw grenades and entered the building with a fight. After a search, we realized that after contact with us, the enemy had managed to withdraw. After that, we occupied the house and we were ordered, together with infantry and anti-tanker support, to stay there for the night for observation. On the morning, about 7 o'clock, uh, the enemy began to work with mortars. For an hour and a half, non-stop, we were covered from mortars along and across. <laughs> As soon as the mortar fire was over, we were already well aware that, as the book says, after the mortar fire, there should be an infantry attack. While the sniper was watching, I was his pure support. He started to record enemy movement. He says, I see a BMP, another BMP, an infantry. I ask him how many, he says a company. I realize that with our forces, we are unlikely to be able to stop it. But when he said that two tanks came out from behind the hillock and stopped, we already realized that it was going to be maximum hell. There were about 13 of us. This is our group and a group of additional infantry and anti-tankers. So in fact, it's two squads. The enemy shelled us from practically everything. Their tanks were firing, their BMPs with 30mm guns, and a group of infantry was coming. They were just marching like a parade. Their mission was to take the first line of defense of the city. They probably didn't fully realize what was going on. They realized that after we opened fire, and our anti-take weapons worked very quickly. Where we were firing from, they didn't really understand. And judging by their actions, I understood that they were not contract soldiers, and they were mostly mobilized troops. They did not understand anything. When there was shooting, they just went down on their knee, not looking for any cover. And so, we understood that they were sent as cannon fodder. The fight was really hard, because even a hundred untrained men with assault rifles, that's at least more than a thousand rounds coming your way. Even three BMPs, that's 30 millimeter caliber rounds coming your way. They were just crushing us in droves. The only thing I can say about their infantry is that they went in as cannon fodder. I mean, there weren't many specialists, just people in Soviet-era helmets, some without body armor, as I saw, with automatic rifles, with plain old bags just coming at us, not even realizing that we were there, in fact. One of the comrades took an RPG, fired from the window, and hit the BMP directly. After hitting it, he threw back the used grenade launcher. He walks over, picks up the second one and walks out, looking with beastly eyes for another BMP. Realizing there isn't one, but there is a group of infantry just piled up, he turns around and fires just there. With my peripheral vision, because we were taking fire, I see the bodies just flying apart. I realize that's obviously not what it was designed for, but it was used very effectively and spectacularly. We were running through corridors that were just pierced by bullets from all sides. I mean, you could run, there was a door in front of you, and a second later, it was pierced by a 30 caliber. And it was as if a higher power was saving you, that you stopped at that time and didn't run any further. You didn't have time to crawl, you had to shoot back. 
A comrade of mine had a movie-like situation. He was firing. A shell from a tank landed near him, and he was simply turned off. We tried to contact him, but we couldn't get in touch at that moment. We didn't know if he was alive or not. He was just unconscious for a while. When he woke up, he saw a huge hole in the wall. I don't know if it was a display of heroism or just rage, but he just went out into that hole, right into the middle, took the safety off and started shooting everyone he saw. Realistically, if it was filmed, like from a drone, it would have looked really epic. The problem came when we saw that the enemy vehicles, along with the infantry, had already started flanking our building. They were not coming straight towards us. Then we realized that we had to get away a little at a time. An enemy tank stopped the advance of our group. And most importantly, one of our group, the four men, got stuck there. The tank blocked the passage and they couldn't get out. They stayed there overnight, surrounded by the enemy. We had no communication with them. I don't know why, but communication was constantly interrupted. Or whether during the dense fighting nobody could hear, I can't answer. But after we got out, we heard on the radio station that one of our groups stayed there. And so our groups had to go back and unblock them. The situation was next. They stayed on a floor where safe passage was blocked on one side. And the unsafe passage was being shelled. They remain trapped, and their heroism can only be envied. The guys spent the night completely surrounded. Four men were calling in artillery fire on themselves. We heard it on the radio station. The artillery men said, we can't, our guys are there. To which the reply was, you don't understand, we are surrounded, shoot. That is, the guys were really just calling in fire on themselves because they realized the situation they were in. The Russians wanted to take them by storm. Just imagine, the guys are sitting on the floor, realizing that the enemy is already piling up from below. They could even hear their conversations very well. Ours just threw grenades and started shooting. Having suffered losses, the enemy retreated, and our guys had a half an hour for a breather. And so it was repeated until the morning, until the next morning. With our help, they came out in full force. Miraculously, we only had lightly wounded that day. That day, we kicked their asses pretty good. I think it was obviously not a company of them that was killed because they were just marching like the Red Army during World War II. You destroy them and they just keep coming. You destroy more of them and new ones come. I can't understand their actions, nor can I understand the actions of their commanders. We are a country that has been at war for eight years. We, and personally in my brigade, all the officers are combat officers who had experience before the full-scale war. And although it's more of a positional war, which was from 2014 to 22, it's knowledge and combat experience. That's the first nuance. The second nuance, we had well-trained personnel. We did not get out of the training ground. There were shortcomings, but it is everywhere, in any army. But we were trained a lot. To be honest, during my service, I was probably on the firing range more than I was at home. Third, their army of priority does not fight. It is recruited mostly from unmotivated, mobilized people. I don't dispute that they have a lot of equipment, and the equipment is new. But what good is it if there's little professionalism? Their men don't know what to do. The radios aren't very good, and if they have professionals, it's certain types of troops, such as tankers, who had to be trained, artillerymen, communicators, that is, those people who are mainly in the rear. The advanced infantry, they really are cannon fodder, for that period of the war, so exactly. Plus, we're motivated. Now, of course, everyone learns. If our mobilized have learned more, we don't deny that they have learned as well. The worst flashbacks involved civilians. The enemy was shelling everything. He didn't care. Many times I saw on the streets the bodies of dead civilians who were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Russians were firing MLRS and destroying whole neighborhoods of the city, for crying out loud. They didn't care that there were civilians there. In fact, they didn't kill a single military person but killed dozens of civilians. 
and just driving around, seeing that, and realizing that, well, what are you going to do? This is war. That's the kind of flashback that's the hardest. It puts pressure on your morals. The fact that you want to help everybody, but you can't, no matter how hard you try. How do you stay strong? You have your brothers in arms. We just hold on to each other. No matter how hard it is mentally or physically, no matter how scared you are of the same artillery and stuff like that, you do it all for one reason. You have comrades. They will go forward and you have to go with them. Uh, when you feel bad, we can calmly talk to each other about certain topics over a cup of tea in a shelter. So we just try to support each other, to open up, however it sounds. Because we men don't really open up. But the war showed these people can be trusted with everything. That is, for example, I go out on another very risky task. Everyone who goes next to me, those whom I fight together, I'm completely confident in them. And if they go forward, I go forward with them. And it's not because I'm so fearless. No, I'm, I'm afraid like everyone else. Um, but because they are, and I trust them, I'm 100% confident in them. And I'm sure that's what everyone thinks of us. How are we ready to go further? In our brigade, we have guys from Luhansk. Uh, we have guys from Kherson. We have some people from Crimea. Now, we will go forward until we have all our lands back. If my home is safe, it will be low for me to leave the war until I have recaptured the homes of my comrades. We have been together since the beginning of this war. From day one, we are together and we will be together until victory. If you were interested by today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.